would you consider your competition like Jungle Boys and uh, you what's know, the other dudes, uh, the Nugs? What's the other dude, Diego? Runs. 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 Nah, Runs is my partner. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. We're, uh, Runs is actually part of Cookies. Cookies okay. uh, partner with Runs. We're we're fifty fifty partners. But how about Jungle Boys? We Jungle consider- Boys, you know, look, man. Let's uh, let me take a sip real quick. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I got a, I got a lot of love for Jungle Boys. I worked with them for a while. We had a brand called Exotics. Yeah, not for sure. But I think at the time we were kind of both going in different directions, you know, like. You and Ivan, right? I mean, still, it's it's still around. I mean, I see, I go into like different shops in in Seattle, and I see the Exotics brand. That's crazy. I I definitely need to, can, I need to collect our royalties. On that <laughs> we, we don't participate in that anymore. I've been, I've maybe been maybe it's been maybe it's been a while, but I remember seeing it like yeah. pretty recently. I mean, you know, look, that whole thing was like it was cool because you know you have to remember like there's been different stories of this. Like people say that. When I Ivan and did that, I was only selling clothes. That's not true. I've been selling weed my whole life. Mm-hmm. I mean, not my whole life, but since I've been like 13, 14. Yeah. And I was doing it in the, rec, uh, in the medical market with Connected, with the licensing deal with Connected. You, you've done this whole story. So, yep. you know, you know that like back in the days I was working with Connected and it was cookies from them. And I just felt like, and I want to do something I can actually can control. And I remember one day Ivan commented on one of my posts and Connected called me and I yo, like, we respect that dude, we fuck with that dude, but you should probably not like entertain some business with him because that would be like considered competition to what we're doing together. And when people tell me not to fuck with people, I immediately want to fuck with them. I'm like, yeah. oh, word, uh, okay. Yes. So I hit him up on the DM and I hit him up. I said, yo, like, uh, let me come film a Marijuana Mania episode with you. And I, that's when I went to go do the Marijuana Mania LA uh, episode. And I just remember his like, Ivan's personality was so dry, but like so real, he's like, Hey, don't get scared when you show up in the hood, fool. And he just hung up. I'm like, damn, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? We pulled up and the shit was in the hood. And I right was across running. the street from it, right? Like from like yeah, I mean, call. this is before that. That's before the location of Boy yeah. Heights. It was their first location. I was really impressed with how Ivan was running his business. I was impressed by the quality of weed. I just told him, let's do something. Bro, I like to work with people. You mentioned earlier when we were talking like all the different collaboration albums I have. I like to work with people. That's why I chose the business route I took with like our store expansion and stuff like that. I like to collaborate with people on things. And so mm-hmm. we decided to do a brand. We were the first brand with the Exotics name in it. I still pay that registered trademark every 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 year or every whatever month it is. I always sign it when I see my invoices come in. But before there was all this exotic shit, that was me and his shit. I came up with the name, came up with the logo, had my brother Al Fresco. I kind of art directed it with him, came up with the powerful logo. He had the genetics. He had some. He had some, you know, cultivation on lock, and we just we fucked with it and we killed it. And it's still there. If we ever want to bring it back, we could bring it back. I always kind of call him and bullshit every now and then, <laughs> yeah. and say, bro, like let's run an exotic collab in Florida. Let's do it somewhere. And so, it's there. If, if people want to see it again, if he wants to do it, I'm I'm open to it. He's a good dude to work with. He grows good weed. I'm good at what I do. Yeah. And we actually have a lot of genetics that I can bring to the table now too. Yeah, one hundred percent. I feel like it like kind of went a little bit like you know it's on the back burner, you know, and still alive though, like you said, and, and that's yeah, a legendary but, thing, bro. I mean, you yeah, guys have put, like consistently been going up and up and bro, up. Bro, Ivan, Ivan kills it, and like I just told him the last time we spoke, I said let's put it in the universe, London pound cake times strawberry shortcake. Let's just yeah, let's bro. run that one first for exotic. That'd be line. legendary too in Florida. Yeah. You know, because I'll, let, I'll let I'll even let him produce it. I just want to see that that collab happen. Yeah, no, that would be I would I'd love to see that, bro, because it really is like the two in like this sector. It's like the two top. I mean, yeah. I have popped off strawberry shortcake and and uh, and London pound cake is one of our staples. So yeah, one hundred percent. So what like I guess it's real quick with that though. Um, so what you guys are gonna get a buyout from Exotics from like the Canadian company and that like. And no, you, just was, didn't, you just didn't want to take the stock, right? No, nah, it wasn't a Canadian company. Canadian comp, company offered to buy cookies, and I didn't yeah, want the that's stock. Yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to say which group, but a group yeah. offered us a sizable amount of money to buy to buy exotics. And at the time, Ivan was actually having a baby at the time, and he was occupied, and he was busy. 
and that was just like the universe telling us that it wasn't worth that deal. There was some good cash up front, and there was some good stock up front, a good stock that came with it, but that deal wasn't a deal for us. It didn't happen for a reason. I'm glad it didn't happen. Facts. What's the, the biggest loss you ever took just in terms of sheer dollars or product that you can disclose? $200 million, and it was in a recreational play. So before we jump back into the content, I want to say big thank you to one of our sponsors on this episode, California Lightworks, in coordination with Grow World. So if you guys go down to the pin comment down below in, in the comment section, and you see that first link, it's going to go to Grow World, and it's going to be a link that will take you to the California Lightworks product. They've got you know the linear series and the vertical series um, for their Mega Drive, and you know. Siri light fixtures, it's one of the best options for commercial growers because it's new installations and gives you a central power supply. There's a bunch of other perks as well. But um, this is just one, you know, the first of many. I want to say, that big, like I said, big shouts out to California Lightworks. Big shouts out to Grow World. I'm very excited to work with them. Um, like I said, go all the way down to the comments. See the pinned comment, the very first link. Press on that and you will. it'll take you right to where you need to go. You're also going to you know, be able to try out some you know, free equipment, potentially. Bunch of perks. Definitely go check it out. I'm very excited. We got some growing content You know, I'm going to be coming out with soon, whether it's home grow or uh, commercial. We've got that stuff coming out here soon. But once again, big shouts out to Grow World. Big shouts out to California Lightworks. Now, let's jump back to the episode. How does and, that happen? Well, I wouldn't. I don't know if you'd call it a loss. Right, but it is a loss because, well, it wasn't exactly mine yet, but uh, let's put it like this without going into too much detail. Just last week, um, there was a huge deal going on, and um, it was on a recreational play, and it was for a brand of mine, and the deal was $200, $200 million. To buy it. To buy it. And um, we went through eight months of due diligence and paperwork and underwriting and cleaning up, you know, licensing agreement, everything you would never want to have to do in life. And I prepared everything and a test wire was sent out I'm like here, boom, here's this. Did it come through smoothly? OK, cool. And at the at 12th hour and the 12th hour, some bullshit had happened with some communication issues and the deal was pulled off the table. And I'm talking about for eight months. For eight months, in my mind, a hundred was mine. A hundred. Mind you, it wasn't all cash. It's some cash and some stock. Right. But I'm sitting there everywhere I'm going. I don't know if you see, I was in motherfucking Spain, in Formatera, Barcelona, Ibiza, San Tropez. I was motherfucking Amsterdam. I was everywhere. I was living because I was like, we, we got it. We right. won. And so when that shit, when that shit didn't come through, and when I say it didn't come through, it's not like, oh, we're entertaining a deal. It didn't work out. I'm talking about the shit was about to close because of some miscommunication. I'm not going to go deep, too deep into that shit just didn't happen. Right. And when that shit happened, man, my hunger, my appetite for everything just came right. I feel like it's actually a blessing because I'm beasting right now. Right. I'm going to leave here. I'm going to go meet some more legendary people in the lab. I'm going to finish this album up. I'm actually going to do my first press run in New York. I'm taking this shit super serious. I'm grinding way harder with cookies. I'm grabbing, grinding hard with my brand Lemonade. Like, I almost, I'm almost glad it happened, but that was the... I feel like it's a loss because it was right there. It was really right there. Yeah. It was in the 13th, fuck 11th hour, 13th hour. Right. How do you want your stock type shit? So... It's hard to even imagine that something that big could get fucked up over something small. Communication. Yeah. Two days in the weed business is like five months. You got all these... You got $25 billion with the motherfuckers right now putting their money into trying to figure out where this, where, how to get right here quick. Right. That's a lot of competition. You think the rap game is tough? Right. I'm fine with fucking geniuses. <laughs> so, you know, in the two days with no communication, for whatever reason that was going on, um, it wasn't on my end, of course, but at the end of the day, them two days, there were so many people in these guys' ears like, what if you did this? What if you could take that money? You could, boop, and they just, so. Right. Yeah. Together, right? And it was kind of like, you know, hey, let's, 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 you know, let's start doing all these curated menus and let's take all these brands and give them, you know, have them bring us the generics. Almost exactly what Bernard's doing now. Yep. Right? That's what, what, it, what Exotics was going to be. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, and, you know, there, there was some, there was some things that ended up happening. And sometimes, you know, Bernard gets in his own head sometimes. Yeah. Thing to prove, bro, you know? 
Yeah. So it kind of just kind of like we kind of went our separate way, but we we still had exotics, and we, you know we had we had been offered a bunch of money for shit, and he was like, nah, oh, bro, like this is that, like like in his interview where he says like fucking hell, my partner made me lose fucking a billion dollars or whatever. That was me, bro. He thought that that was the exotics deal, and, and I had replied to that like no, like no, your boy saved you, bro. Yeah, and then he talks about in another interview about yeah. exactly what. Oh, that's so. Oh, that's wild. You're the one who told him that. Well, yeah, because yeah, you know you're because yeah. burner. I, I knew, yeah. I, 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 I fucking smell right through those guys. Bro. Yeah, dude. You're like I'm not trying to get a bunch of stock. You know, uh, yeah. Man, yeah. And you guys are worth 250 million. I'm like, but we have way more revenue than you. We have a real brand. Yeah. Revenue. You have real cash flow. No, so you really put them all when it comes, like, I mean, not to say just you guys, but like, I know there's a whole group, but like, I think he kind of identified what your model, kind of what you guys were doing and, and was like, okay, let's do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I get the, and I've, yeah, yeah so sorry, keep going. We have, we've said, no, yeah, I'm not sure. So we've since like, you know, obviously made up and, and yeah. talked, we, we haven't fully talked about our differences. Like I just talked to him last night, you know, he was asking yeah. me about some person, he was actually asking me if he should, he should get the vaccine. And like, I think, I think. He'll always look up to me as his big bro. You yeah, know? And like yeah. Somebody that he could call for advice anytime, and if he ever needed anything, I'm, I'm there for him. You know. Yeah. And listen, at the end of the day, if fucking uh, he called me tomorrow, I was like, let's do some shit. Let's go, bro. Like fucking, you know, like let let's do it. You know. But but I think that we just kind of took a different path. You know, where yep. I was more like. I, I wasn't willing to give my brand up and put it in other people's hands. You know what I mean? No. Totally different people. You know, yeah. Sim, similar upbringing. You know what I mean? Similar. You know, we both had parents that died from cancer. Yeah. We fucking both. You know, didn't grow up with fucking money and all that shit. You know, but he's a rapper. I'm not. You yeah. Know what I mean. Yeah. So it's like. You know, when, 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 when I'm like, bro, fuck buying jewelry and all that shit, buy lights. He's like, I have to, bro. I'm a fucking rapper. And I'm like, yeah. I get it, bro. But that's not me. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Yeah. So, but, but I mean, bro, like, like I vacation with them and, you know. Yeah. You guys are boys, like, but it's, yeah. Yeah, we're boys. You know what yeah. I mean? But at the end of the day, it's like, like, you know, the shit that he's got going on right now, that shit's brutal, bro. Having that many partners and all that. I feel, yeah. yeah. He more felt it than I did at the time. I was like, yeah, let's see if we can get kicked up and put it back into our own businesses. It was an easy play, but he kind of like kind of distanced himself from the negotiation, and I kind of felt that he's a smart dude. And so if he doesn't want to fuck with it, then it probably not probably not the right deal. So thank God we didn't do it. Hundred percent. I mean, I feel like the long term now on that, bring it back. I mean, that could be crazy, you know. Um, but that was kind of your one of your very first collabs, I guess, right? Like flat collab, collab deals, really? Um, no, I did hella before that. I mean, that's my well, first, I'm saying like, like that's brand, my first collab, like collab brand. brand, right? Yeah, so, yeah. And, and just so you know, like yeah. the thought behind Exotics was what we try to do with the other portfolio brands. So, my thought with Exotics in the first place when I sat down with Ivan was let's do something with all the breeders that we respect, have them bring some shit to the table, give them the credit help build them up, right? I do collabs with everybody. So we had my boy from uh, Denver bring the Fabuloso. We had third gen uh, Brandon bring some genetics. We had um, we had a couple of his people bring genetics. My boy Brett from Lemonade brought some genetics. We had a pool full of genetics that we were gonna run. And the whole thought was like, you got the cultivation, I have the relationships, I have the palate, I have the, the, the eye for, for good strains, rolling out good strains, the branding of it. Let's build this platform for a bunch of breeders to come together and do some dope ass shit. And so when that kind of fell apart, that's when you kind of see me do, you know, some of the partnerships like with Mints or with, um, you know, with some of the other partners that we partner with. You know? Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been cool to see how that all develops. But um, yeah, it's always it's always interesting when I look at you and Ivan because it's like Ivan's more seen as like kind of the grower. You're seen as more of like the the entrepreneur kind of, you know. There's like, you know, it's like the two classifications. There's the trapper well, and then the grower. Like, really, well, it's right? like, it's honestly like, it's also like two different business models, right? Yeah. Like the way that he's taking his business is vertical. It's very different than mine. He's vertically integrated in every aspect. He grows his own weed. He runs his own stores. He makes his own hash. He makes his own rosin. He kills it, right? And there's, there's a big plus to that. But I think at the time we were kind of both going in different directions, you know, like, uh, 
we both helped each other out you know i helped him on the cannabis part of it you know even told him like some deals that he came like nah bro ask for more bro you know like you're worth way to me bro like you know you're worth more than that you know so we kind of helped each other out like that but then with the whole legalization and the craziness you know it's like oh i'm opening up a spot right here you have a spot right here we're like bro you know what we went through to fucking be able to stay open here we've been in a lawsuit with the city for 15 years you know we've been fucking raided you know uh, food for less is suing us you know so when someone says hey we're gonna open up right here you know it's like all right like no issues fucking do your thing open up right there you know i got a lot of love for jungle boys i worked with them for a while we had a brand called exotics I never said this shit on the internet. I've been wanting to say this shit for a long time. Maybe right. I'm just, it's the mode. This is where you talk. You're like yeah, a, yeah, a, yeah, you're a therapist, yeah, a counselor. Yeah, that's, I, am. To the I game. am. I am, yes. I think they got a little upset when we opened up in LA, just truth be told. Oh, because you guys were supposed to have San yeah. Fran in the Bay Area, the Yada Mean area. It's never like been that. the same since Yada Dai Boo Boo pulled up to LA. When I pulled up, it was right. a problem. And I got love for you, Ivan. If you watch this, it's a pretty big show. I love you, brother. I don't yeah. know what the problem is, but look, there's enough money for everyone. Your menu's incredible. You go, you grow great eating. Okay. It's totally different than ours. All right. Don't trip, homie. Goddamn, man. So, let's be peace. Peace in the Middle East, man. You heard everything I said. It's positive. I love the dude. The girl's great, but I think that he probably thought that it was a little, uh, like stepping on his toes. Yeah, he looks it's like territorial. Yeah. Type Why is Jungle Boys around that area of Melrose? No. Nah. He just say oh, in L.A. Period. Oh, L.A. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Damn. They, they yeah. want the whole city. Well, you know, you know Maywood, Maywood's close to them. Uh, uh, I ain't gonna lie. The first store we opened up was like eight minutes away. Okay. It's a little fucked up. I'm sorry. All right. But it's, that's it's, the way it worked though, and and I always wanted to do collabs and, and keep it cool because I love dude. That's my boy. Right. We had business together. We broke real bread together, but. Amber's game is funny, so right. what can you do about it? But I think we just kind of had like different paths we were going in, you know, where we were like, hey, we just want to hunker down and, and, and build this one shop and maybe open another shop. He was going to do big things and, you know, do multiple licensing deals and branding deals and all that shit, which is, which is dope, you know, but that was, we were just like, let's just, I always thought about it like this, like if I owned, you know, a hundred percent of something that was worth, you know, a billion dollars, I own 5% of something that's worth a billion or two billion dollars right i always felt like i always wanted to to be in control of where i ended up in the very end of it you know what i mean mm. so we kind of just started doing our own thing he started doing his own thing or whatever and you know like still to this day we're fucking you know like like we've made men's on on things that we had issues on back in the day you know but i think that you know you got to respect someone that's a father you know someone that that hustles and you know someone that you know is on their grind every single day you got to respect those people you know like we might yeah. have differences or you know i might think different about different things but at the end of the day it's like bro you got to respect people bro you know not for sure and, and i think i respect everyone in this industry you know like at the end of the day you got to give props where props is due and you just tell your story and they have their story you know and and you know we're, we're, we both might be wrong we both might be right or you know we're both telling the same story you know what i mean that's, that's how i feel about it you know this person that did it in another state like colorado and let's bring this compliant person in and make them part of the team because they're going to teach us all this stuff you know but i mean we we never had you know ceos cfos you know board meetings you know because it was just us you know yeah. like a lot of people think we're like big from the outside like we look over this massive company you know but we do everything ourselves you know i don't have a fucking assistant you know i'm the only guy with the password to instagram whether that's a good or bad thing i don't know you know what i mean it's probably yep. a bad thing you know yeah but it's like we just got here because we just we just adapted and we survived you know we did you know we, we always just took care of everyone around us you know Man, you made that sound simple but it's not that you also put in the work you survived you ducked the bullets and dodged you you it's about the culture you built. sweat and tears yeah it's, it's about the culture you built and i and the key thing you said is that it was word of mouth someone knew someone and there's a tie there you know and i think that's super crucial so moving forward to talk about your florida project man how are you kind of handling everything out there yeah so florida we've kind of taken a separate a different approach to that thing because we're like listen there's no way that we can expand our business and we'd be the only ones that do everything you know no. so we hired a team out there you know a team that you know a, a real ceo you know someone that you know can can find us real estate you know like let's run this like a real business now you know and listen it gets to the point now where it's like all right listen 
at the end of the day, I'm not greedy. You know, if I have to give up a percentage of my company, you know, which I've never had to still to this day, you know, but to bring people on, I think I'm at that point now where we're like, listen, bro, there's a couple points there. Where we could bring real people on to do this. And we're like at that point now, you know? So I think with the whole Florida thing is just like, we're like, we went in there and we kept telling them like, bro, if this shit takes four or five years for, for electricity, we're not interested. And we were like, listen, it's not like that here. You know, and we're like, you know, we've heard that before. We've heard that before, you know, and it's like, you go in there, we lease the building, you ask for power. Three months later, we have power. Like we're sitting there like, what the fuck? That same power we've been waiting for five, six years in LA, you know? And then you Damn. go to the city, you turn in a permit and two weeks later, they give you your stamped approval. Here's your permits. Those same permits have been sitting in LA for two and a half years. Wake up LA, you know? Man. And you're just like, dude, Florida is beautiful, bro you know and you're like why the fuck can la be like this why can't california be like this you know the beaches are different too yeah like not even a beach it's totally different yeah you know it's yeah yeah you know it's just florida's just different you know yeah they love but good cannabis the thing about it is they're business friendly bro you yep. know and yep. when you have a real business friendly it's like why is why are all these big companies moving out of california you know it's because you want to go to a state that allows you to work and make money you don't want to tie any businesses hands you know so i think it's just been like a big relief for us you know and it's like we know we're in it for the long haul you know we're not in it to to you know get rich over there or anything where it's, it's going to be the long game you know but I think that everything we learned here, we're able to take there and just, you know, make a mirror of it, but without all the bullshit, you know, like, of course, there's going to be bullshit. Of course, there's going to be problems. Of course, you're going to always have issues. But the, the red tape bullshit of California and L.A. is big for a business for sure. Yeah, man. But the way I did my business was, again, going back to wanting to work with people and liking to work with people and seeing the value of working with people in other markets to be able to expand fast. We just partner with people. It's not like we let anyone open up a cookie store. We don't let anyone just cultivate for cookies. We try to cherry pick the best people around the country to expand as fast as we can. And sometimes those partnerships are good for right then, but then other things come online that mm -hmm. are better for the brand and we work backwards. But our goal was to expand with the other MSOs. And I think I always wanted to take that approach. Ivan's good with owning his portfolio and controlling his portfolio. I seen some of the other people coming in the space that wanted to go global and wanted to go nationwide. And I was like, I want to go head to head with them Yeah. because I've been doing this since I've been 18 legally. And I know that there needs to be someone that loves weed in a position that these other people are in. Right. 100%. So and you saw the I, speed with it too, right? Cause the yeah. speed, the speed and like of, of growth is going to be much faster with the small, right? But you should also look at this uh, on some entrepreneurship, like, Everyone else in that top 10 brands of cannabis revenue wise or just whatever it may be, we're in that top 10. They've raised anywhere from like 500 million to Crazy two overhead. billion dollars. Yeah. We've only raised like a little under 60 total. And so like I've been able to do what they've been able to do with like a fucking baby fraction of their money. So it's all about up here, right? And so we just, I like working with people. We had a good game plan. I had a different agenda of like what I wanted my business to look like and be. And neither of them are wrong. They're both good. Like, They're both good, you. dude. Exactly. Yeah. Before we jump back into the video, I want to say huge shout out to my friends over at Dr. Smoke. If you guys go over to drsmoke.com and use my code LMC, you're going to get 15% off your entire order. Now, why do I love Dr. Smoke? Well, one, I've been working on a THCA documentary with them. They've got THCA over there. By the way, if you don't know what that is, it's just regular flour. So you'll learn more when this documentary comes out. But guys, go over to Dr. Smoke. They've really been keeping the show going. They've helped me, you know, expand and I can't thank them enough. So guys, go over to drsmoke.com, use my code LMC and you're going to get 15% off your entire order. Anyways, let's jump back into the video. I've been wondering about and I know we talked about is the exotics line you guys rolled out with burner and like, I mean, the shopping cart with the packs and like, I mean, you guys were, no one was doing it like that. Yeah, I think the artwork. Yeah, I, I think uh, I always respected um, what Burner was doing. And, you know, I think he had like a cool, you know, with like his clothing line back then. You know, I remember being at Chalice with him and it was like, dude, you got the clothing line. You know, I have all the weed, you know, so it was like I helped him with the weed part. He helped me with the clothing line part, you know, because that's how we always are with everybody. We're like, hey, bro, let me let me break it down to you, you know, 
And I would always tell him like, bro, you just need your one spot that you own, bro. You know, like maybe like a thousand lights, 500 lights or whatever in one shop that you own by yourself, bro. You know, and then you're set, you know, the staple. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's your spot. No one else owns it. You know, no, no one else can say, you know, just, just one bro, you know, cause that's how we always did it. You know, it was like, we always made sure we owned everything, you know? So no one could ever come, you know, say, oh, I own this. I have these shares, blah, blah, blah. We're like, no, we're keeping this shit all to ourselves, you know? <laughs> so I think we kind of put each other on game. He put me on the clothing. I put him on the cannabis stuff, you know, and then he was already doing some stuff with reef, you know? And I was like, let's, let's, let's do this, you know? So we, we went up in Seattle, that shit was popping, you know? But I think at the time we were kind of both going in different directions, you know, like, uh, we both helped each other out. You know, I helped him on the cannabis part of it. You know, even told him like some deals that he came like, nah, bro, ask for more, bro. You know, like you're worth way to me, bro. Like, you know, you're worth more than that, you know? So we kind of helped each other out like that. For people, we had a good game plan. I had a different agenda of like what I wanted my business to look like and be. And neither of them are wrong. They're both good. Like, they're both good, you, dude. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. They're just totally different ones. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see like, you know, I think honestly, like, I think Ivan saw what you did and, and like probably learned, you know, I think he's made some kind of slight moves that have. And you know, they're both, they're both difficult. There's nothing easy about being yeah. vertically integrated. There's nothing easy about working with 200 people with yeah. egos and their own agendas and their own visions as well. You have to kind of bring people back into the circle sometimes by, no, nah, no, nah, we're doing this. And this is why we're doing this. And this is why we're doing it like this, right? And 100%. so it's, they're both hard to manage. And yeah. so hats off to him and hats off to me. We're still yeah, in the game. And absolutely. that's why I think we still have a good relationship and a good friendship because we both go through some shit to be where we're at. And people yeah. think it's easy and we got it good. And, you know, it's just this or that, but oh, that's no, a lot of work. Absolutely. Into shit. And there's mad respect there, you know, I think definitely two people i look up to quite a bit so thank you uh, no but it's always interesting like the two like archetype kind of i kind of look at you guys and then the two different pathways of licensing and their full vertical um no it's it's, it's dope it's still there if we ever want to bring it back we could bring it back i always kind of call him and bullshit every now and then <laughs> yeah. and say bro like let's run the exotic collab in florida let's do it somewhere and so is there if, if people want to see it again if he wants to do it I'm, I'm open to it he's a good dude to work with he grows good weed i'm good at what i do and yeah. we actually have a lot of genetics that i can bring to the table now too yeah 100 percent. i feel like it like kind of went a little bit like you know it's on the back burner you know and still alive though like you said and, and that's yeah, a legendary but, thing bro i mean you yeah, guys have put, like consistently been going up and up and bro up. ivan ivan kills it and like i just told him the last time we spoke i said let's put it in the universe London pound cake times strawberry shortcake. Let's just yeah, let's run that one first for exotic. That'd be line. legendary too in Florida. Yeah. You know, because I'll, I'll let I'll even let him produce it. I just want to see that that collab happen. Yeah. No, that would be I would I'd love to see that, bro, because it really is like the two in like this sector, it's like the two top. I mean, yeah. I helped pop off strawberry shortcake with him and uh, and London pound cake is one of our staples, so yeah, one hundred percent. I can't lie, this is a video that I've been kind of wanting to do for quite some time now. I mean, I've really had, you know, rough drafts of this video already pre-made, you know, like a year plus ago. But I didn't think it was the right time, but I think, you know, after, you know, interviewing Burner, shout out to Burner for doing the interview. You know, I think it's been, you know, I think it's time to kind of really explore this, this, this relationship between these two individuals, these two companies. Um, and then obviously their their collaboration and that of the exotics brand. But overall, like I said, now that you know, and you know, people get competitive, right? There's things that happen in business. But I, it's cool to see that they've kind of come back together now. They're not, you know, they're not really hating on each other whatsoever. They're just, you know, they're they've moved on from the past, which is dope to see. And like I said in, you know, the interview with Burner, it, it, and I've been like known this for a while, but like, it's so interesting. You see these two different, right? These two different brands, companies that have gone two different pathways, right? And these two different individuals, right? There's kind of the grower, entrepreneur, and then like the the trapper, promoter, entrepreneur, music, you know, with that Burner, you have Ivan, the kind of grower, entrepreneur. And it's just been interesting to see like, you know, their you know evolution over the years right one's doing the vertical one's doing the licensing model right there's the tortoise and the hare potentially who knows you know will it end up being you know we'll have to see it's just gonna be fascinating to see how this all turns out 
But regardless, first of all, you know, Ivan, someone that I look up to immensely, he's kind of one of actually, I kind of said it like I, I know for a fact, he's really one of the people that per put me on initially. He was the very first entrepreneur that, you know, agreed to sit down with me, do an interview with me, put me onto a lot of game. Um, and he's just a really brilliant person. I mean, his ability to, first of all, just see what I was trying to do and saw like where this could go and you know, here I am now. You know, I'll forever be thankful for that. Love Ivan, Ivan's a brilliant dude. Burner, obviously brilliant dude. You know, very cool to finally be able to talk to now both of them. You know, definitely some goals of mine that I've, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped that I finally reached that. But, you know, it's, it's fascinating to see. I mean, these are two people that are friends, but they're also obviously competitors to a certain degree. And they also have, you know, collaborations that they've done, you know, and they can potentially do here in the future. It's going to be fascinating to see what happens over in Florida. I personally would love to see a, you know, at least a limited edition exotics collab drop between Cookies and the Jungle Boys in Florida. I think that'd be fucking dope. I think that would be great. You know, I think the, the synergy between the two in Florida makes a lot of sense right now. Two brands that, you know, are going up against some big MSOs over there. And, uh, you know, I think to do some pretty dope stuff together. Now, that being said too, I think it's also interesting, you know, I'm not, I'm not really a pocket watcher here, but you know, if I had to say the who's like probably the most successful person, successful cannabis entrepreneur in like the culture sector, if that makes sense, folks, in within our kind of like our, you know, the, 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 the the, the, the brands from the traditional market that if you know, were in medical, you know, from the West Coast, really, if I had to say who's like one of the most successful out of them all, it would actually be Ivan. You know, Ivan's made some brilliant plays when it comes to, you know, Lux Lighting, right? They sold that for 216 million or something, right? After four years of the company uh, being there, you know. Um, you know, obviously there's, there's people like Brandon, other people over there that have done brilliant, a brilliant job with that. You know, but like I said, if, I'm not trying to pocket watch here, but if I had to say who's like the most successful in terms of just like the amount of money that they've made, just like cash wise, Ivan's at the top. I mean, he's he's a brilliant dude, brilliant, brilliant dude. And if you haven't seen the video, by the way, on the Jungle Boys that I did, the documentary, go check it out. It'll tell the whole story of their, you know, come up, and, you know, Ivan's come up. And then, you know, with Burner, right? Burner is his potential, you know, the potential for what Cookies is going to potentially get you know, sold for or, you know, all, obviously all of his other business endeavors. It's it's going to be fascinating to see how all those turn out. But um, I would say, though, like I said, study, study people you look up to, study entrepreneurs that you look up to, try to get to know them, try to talk to them. You know, these are this kind of what I did, right? I've, I've learned an immense amount just by studying these two, these two people, right? So overall guys, like I said, I got mad love for both of these companies, for you know, the individuals behind them. Um, and I just, I, I think it's an interesting story, right? That being said, I cannot wait to see what the future holds. And if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, comment down below, all that good stuff. Also, if you guys want to see exclusive content like this or get early access to content like this, please go over to High Design, www.highdesign.media and go and you know sign up for our High Design platform. There's a free version, right? So you don't have to pay anything if you can't afford it. But if you can also like afford it, you know, it's like $4.99 a month. It would go, you know, it's a cup of coffee pretty much. Um, it would go a long way for me, help, you know, support my team. We're really trying to expand everything that we're trying to do here. We're trying to make it consistent. And that's the best way to do that is through a platform, subscription platform like this. And you're gonna get weekly exclusive content. You know, we're, we're getting the whole, the engine is finally coming up, and, you know, it's finally you know, up and running. And we're gonna be able to pumping out high quality, great content that's gonna be exclusively on that platform. You're also gonna get early releases. You're also gonna get access to some deals on different products. We're gonna have some of our own products. You know, we got some growing uh, content coming down the pipeline soon. Anyways, guys, I don't wanna talk your ear off too much, but I really appreciate you guys all. Big shouts out to Ivan, big shouts out to Burner, big shouts out to Cookies, big shouts out to Jungle Boys. And um, maybe we'll see that, that, that exotics come back one day, maybe one day soon, hopefully in Florida. But 
it'll be interesting to see. But if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments what you think. I'd love to hear your, your, your feedback. Always looking to get better. Um, but anyways, guys, I really, really appreciate y'all. Definitely make sure to check the links down below in the description. Follow us on social medias. Sign up for the subscription platform. And yeah, guys, I really appreciate y'all. My name is LMC. Signing out. Yeet!